Greetings all and welcome to another Tuesday webinar from Duxy. I'm Jo Henderson, a familiar face to many of you as I co-host these sessions every two weeks. I'm joined today by my fellow marketing colleague Beth Baxter in the yellow cap there and Head of Professional Services Giles Garnett, not in a cap. <laughs> today we'll be focusing on how to gain company followers and use newsletters to grow your business but before I hand over the reins let me give you a guided tour so you know how the session will be run today. If you're new to these webinars, then you need to know that we love getting your questions. I always answer those that I can at the end of the session, and I leave the best questions for Giles and Beth to answer at the end of the session. Um, so you can ask questions. If you look at the GoTo dashboard, there's a little questions box in there. So if you post your questions in there, then um, I'll keep a track of them as we go through the session. Uh, any useful links that we, uh, we discuss, I will share in the chat function, which is also on that GoTo dashboard. If you're an existing user, don't forget to leave us a GT review. I think that might be the next slide. And to say thank you, then we will share one of our lovely caps. Uh, what else have I got? There we go. Then you've seen the whole range of the colours there. Um, and also, if you're new, then take advantage of our free trial. So we always talk about our free trials. Um, it features all of the features. Uh, the trial will give you access to all of the features that we talk about on today's session. Um, and I will put the link in the chat function um, when we get started. Um, you'll receive the recording from us later on today. So you can recap anything that you need and you can share that recording with your colleagues as well. So let's head over to the agenda slide and see what we'll be looking at today. So Beth will kick us off in a moment. We're going to be looking at how to use Duck Soup to grow company followers. We'll be looking at how to create a winning newsletter strategy. We'll be looking at turning company followers into newsletter subscribers and how to feed your funnel using Duck Soup. Enough from me. Beth, do you want to take it away? <laughs> thank you, Joe. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Um, I think with the caps as well as Joe jo just said about the G2 review, it really does boost our customer support team when they see those reviews. So it's really nice for them. These webinars are free. We love to share tips and insights with you, but um, the support team get a real buzz out of getting good reviews. So if you're able to, if you love duck soup, please do pop a review in. We will send you a cap um, and hopefully you can wear it on the next webinar you come on to. So, <laughs> so yeah, let's start with company followers. Um, I think today's webinar is we've got some quite easy hacks for you to get started with um, the company followers and newsletters. This should be stuff that you could do really easily and we're going to kind of take the duck soup edge and we're going to advance them. So with everything we're looking at, duck soup takes it to that next level and it really starts to grow. So company followers, we get a lot of people asking us how to do it, they want to do it, they want to grow their followers, but I think the real question is kind of why. Um, so with LinkedIn, it's all about company followers is all about gaining brand awareness and getting more eyes on your content. So the more followers you have, the more traction you tend to get on your content. And as everyone knows, you know, LinkedIn promotes, well, you might not know, LinkedIn promotes organic posts that gain traction quickly. So if you can build your company followers, you're posting good content on your company page, then the quicker people engage, the more people engage and react to that, the more your content will be seen. So it's tricky. It's tricky to gain in engagement on organic content. I don't know whether you've ever measured what engagement your organic content is getting, but LinkedIn obviously wants to promote lots of ads in people's feeds. So get more money from that than they will from posting your organic content. So really the content that you put on your company feed has to be good quality and it has to gain traction quickly, hence growing your company followers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how you can do this using duck soup. So you might find that you're organically growing your company followers, but let's accelerate this. So for um, one company that we know of that's using duck soup, um, they're gaining seven new company followers every day. So in the space of, um, I think it's three months, their company followers went from 395 up to 1,345. And what that did to their average impressions on every post was it took their impressions from between three and 500 per post 
to 4,000 per post. So you can see that if you can gain your company followers, then your posts will gain a lot more visibility, a lot more awareness, and obviously help to grow your business. So Giles, I think, has this campaign that the one that actually we've the client has used to grow their company followers. He has this campaign, I believe, set up, and he's going to walk you through how to do it. Well, I don't have the one that's set up for that individual, but I can show you how it works from our from our perspective with uh, with regards um, actually achieving this. So if I just um, well, let's move the slides out of the way because then I can show you um, how it all works. So if we look at, for example, um, the the duck soup uh, company page here. We can actually go into our if we're if we're with the, the the page owner we can go into our our company followers we can we can go into our followers here we can look at our demographics and everything and what we can see down here is we can see exactly who our who our followers are so if if i am the owner of the page i can see here all of the company followers and i can run duck soup from here and that's great but what we also want to do is we want to invite followers so if we've got the the link to to follow our page and i'm now now going to flounder around and try and remember where to find that and let me have a think about where that would be uh, da, 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 da. i think it's under the dashboard isn't it where the uh, where you get the choice to uh, to create a url for your company followers do, 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 do. seamless hey uh, hey beth uh, i'll find yeah. it in a second <laughs> So you just um, give a link to your company page and they can then follow when they hit when they go to the company yeah. page they hit the follow yeah, button absolutely. yeah yeah so i mean if we go to our company page then yeah we, we, we could do exactly that so in fact that's the company page no that's the analytics page as well but either way what we go can do then is we can create a... yeah just click the viewers member and you'll get the duck suit one if you want it mm -mm -mm. oh yeah viewers member. <laughs> It's there right in front of me. There you are. You see, it is live, all of this. So uh, one of the problems yeah. is here we're, we're following this already. But what you can do then is if you know if you click on that follow there, that creates a URL. You can then actually then use that URL to uh, to copy into your into your uh, into your campaign. Now what I'm showing you today is everything in Turbo. It is applicable for DuckSoup Cloud as well. So just remember that as well. A lot of this can be achieved using DuckSoup Pro, but it involves a little bit more um organization a bit more of a, an organized process so we're talking here about finding our first degree connections that's first of all and then we're going to build a campaign as to how to get people to follow us so easiest way to find our first degree connections is to go to my network um, and if we then go to my connections here we can then see the first degree connections Easiest way then, because this is just a um, um, uh, chronological order of, uh, of connections, but if I go now to search filters, we could do this in Sales Navigator if we had this in Sales Navigator as well. That would be perfectly uh, feasible as well. But what we've done here is we've now created a list of our first degree connections. If our list of connections in regular LinkedIn, remember, is bigger than 1,000, then we need to break it down into manageable chunks because we never see more than a thousand results here. So remember that in regular LinkedIn. If you're in Sales Navigator, I say it every time, it's two and a half thousand. So remember that as well. So if we wanted to break it down by by location, for example, if we wanted to look who's in the UK, we could do that here and find the 55 that are in the UK and maybe add the people who are in the US. We can then sort of build up our, 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 our list like this. Now, once we've got our list of first degree connections here, we then would like to create our our campaign to reach out to these first degree connections say hey wouldn't it be great if you followed our company page and we can do that using DuckSoup turbo or cloud by building a campaign and we do that in our ducks dash and don't worry i know this is quite quick because there's quite a lot of content to get through here and beth's got loads of brilliant stuff to share with us um so it's all being recorded you'll get all of that in due course if i go into my ducks dash the dashboard where we can do all of our campaign creation and management go to our drip campaigns here and quite simply we can create a new campaign here and what we're going to call this campaign is we're going to call it first degree um, uh, follower invite so we can just create a, a new campaign we're going to run this in regular LinkedIn because I don't have sales navigator here and then we're going to get rid of our connection request we don't need to send a connection but we can't send a connection request request to our first degree connections so get rid of that and now we can put our, our, our outreach message to these people here um hey underscore fn underscore using the the first name of the individual that we're reaching out to um it would be great oh, if i could type 
it would be great if I could type. It'd be great if you would follow our page. Um, and then you could put your ad, add your link in uh, if you could follow. Oop. Nothing like typing under pressure, is, is there? <laughs> All thumbs and uh, yeah, dyslexic fingers. Apologies for that. Uh, there we go. Um, so I could then put my URL in here, save that campaign. Once I've created that campaign, I might then add another step in maybe a reminder that goes out in a week's time just in case um, but then all I need to do then is go back to my my list of contacts click on my duck soup icon say enroll profiles and then I could select my first degree follower invite stick in however many people there are here 315 press ok and duck soup will take the first 315 people on this list who have not gone into this campaign before if they've already gone in there it's going to skip past them um, and send them that invite. It's going to queue up that activity for DuckSoup to execute. Really, really easy to reach out and get out to those people. Now, the great thing as well, because you're only reaching out here to first degree connections, you can send out lots of messages. Um, there's a great article on our on our web page about keeping your LinkedIn account safe, which hopefully uh, Joe can find and stick into the chat box, because that will give you the breakdown on how many messages you can send out, depending on the type of LinkedIn account you've got. So that's whether you're running a free account or a career premium or a sales navigator account or a recruiter account. There are different limits as to how many direct messages you can send out per day um, from your LinkedIn account, making sure you stay within those safe safe limits. But if, for example, um, I have a sales navigator account on my on my LinkedIn account, um, and I would comfortably be able to send out maybe a couple of hundred of messages to first degree connections a day. So I could really easily queue up a whole load of uh, actions here and very quickly get that message out to a lot of people um, and spread the word about getting them to follow my company page. Yeah, and I think that's just a really nice, simple trick to use. And I think I omitted to say it's targeting your first degree connections, but you've already got connections. You've spent time building your connections, just asking them to follow your page. If you can take your average impressions of every post from 300 or so up to 4,000 or so, that's a really quick win. Um, and you can continue to run that campaign as you scale your connections. So um, it's an ongoing thing that you can continue to build your following. And that's the great thing about duck soup campaigns you can't enroll somebody into the same campaign twice so even if they if people appear in that list again and again and again duck soup's just going to skip past them because it's oh, that's been done already you won't look stupid by sending duplicate messages out there um and that's a really awesome thing now just as a little side as well and uh, and this wasn't in the script sorry beth um if people are reacting to your posts as well remember you can re you can um you can run duck soup against people who've reacted to a post. So remember that as well. And when I do a little bit more demonstration later, I'll maybe try to remember to show you how, how that works as well. There's loads of different lists that duck soup works against. Page followers is a great one. First degree connections, search results, all those different sorts of things. If you've got more questions about the different lists, then chuck them in the question box and we can show you more detail later. And this process that Giles has just, just gone through, we have turned into an article on our website already um, with all the statistics, including the message that was actually sent out to gain seven new followers a day. So um, I think Joe can hopefully put that one in the chat as well. So that blog is specifically called How to Grow Your Company Followers. So literally you can follow the process there. Um, thanks, Joe. So that's company followers, really easy, really easy trick. If you're not, it'd be really interesting to know if people are growing their company followers or trying to grow their company followers so if you are and this has been useful pop it in the chat it's really good to hear your feedback as to whether you're already doing this or not um, so i think the next thing we're going to move on to is newsletters so again really interesting to know if anyone's running a newsletter for their business now newsletters um you do need to have 150 company followers in order to start a newsletter so this is the only qualifying criteria effectively effectively for linkedin newsletters and they are different to company posts but so why newsletters um so newsletters have 100,000 character limits per newsletter. And I think the idea is that they want people to show a depth of knowledge. So it's all about thought leadership. It's about expertise. It's the kind of thing that you would write in a blog. So it should be in-depth content um, that is useful to your audience. Now, 
the nice thing about newsletters and their real appeal is that subscribers are notified every time you publish a newsletter so whereas when you're posting to your company page it's only visible in the feed to certain people um, in fact I did some statistics that show that LinkedIn posts only actually show to six percent of your audience if you post a newsletter LinkedIn notifies a hundred percent of your subscribers so the difference between six percent visibility of your followers on a LinkedIn post to a hundred percent visibility for your newsletter is massive and the other thing that's really quite exciting about starting a newsletter is the first newsletter you publish, it notifies all of your company followers that you've started a newsletter. So it will automatically notify your company followers. So leading back to what we've just done, if you run a campaign to increase your company followers, so you go from 1,000 company followers up to 4,000 company followers, when you publish your first newsletter, LinkedIn will notify all 4,000 company followers that you've started a newsletter. And we experienced 30% um, of our company followers subscribing to DuckSoup's newsletter when we first launched it. So that's really powerful. That then gives you much more visibility um, and much more, again, traffic brand awareness. So you're reaching a much wider audience. Now, the other in nice thing about newsletters that you don't get with posts is you get the subscriber demographic data. So if you're trying to understand what your target audience is, you can see here, you can look at like job titles, um, you can look at where they're based, you can look at the industries they're in, you can look at the company sizes. So actually, if you're not sure what your ideal customer profile is, then LinkedIn helps you to actually identify that. So if you go on to the next slide, please, Charles. I think there's a few more things that I just wanted to touch on. Um, the other thing you will get with newsletters is you can view the clicks and the opens, which kind of gives you just an insight into the intent um, of your audience and how keen they are to read, to read your articles. And finally, newsletters are much better in terms of the visual storytelling. So if you post to your company page, if you look at the example on the left, you can normally write a description and then you can add some photos and obviously they bunch the photos together at the bottom. There's no relevancy between the photos and the content. However, if you look at the one on the right, which is a newsletter article, you can actually put imagery in the content. So actually the visual storytelling, you can tell a story, you can assign images, which is just much more powerful in terms of the user journey and getting people to take a call to action at the end of it. Carry on, next slide please, Jazz. So if you haven't, I can't see how many, let's have a look at how many people have answered whether they're using newsletters. We've not had anyone actually. Not had anyone. So, okay, let me know if you're using newsletters, but here we're going to, um, just show you through how to create a newsletter. Again, really easy for you to do. So you can do this tomorrow if you've got, or today, if you've got 150 followers at least. So you can see here, this company, Henley Theatre Services, has 380 followers, so they can create a newsletter. So if you go to your company page, you have to be a page admin, and I think most of the people here are, from what they were saying at the beginning of the kind of, on the registration document, is you, you click the post, the plus post button, and then on the next slide, Giles, it will show you what pops up is a little box to say create a newsletter. So all you do is click create a newsletter and then move on to the next slide, Giles. You can then start to brand your newsletter. So here we've called ours DuckSoup LinkedIn Insights. Um, discover the latest LinkedIn lead generation tips with DuckSoup, the number one LinkedIn automation tool. So you can edit that, you can edit your logos, um, and you can see that we've currently got 425 subscribers and we've got two editions. So we're quite new on this newsletter front. Um, and again, next step, once you've branded it, is to post your first article, remembering to grow your company followers first. So the more company followers you can get, and you know, don't push it off for too long, but if you can get a nice, run some quick campaigns to grow your company followers with all your employees, then that would be a great thing to do. Um, okay, so let's move on to looking at a newsletter strategy, because once you've created your newsletter, we're just going to touch on what things you should be looking at to give you the best chance to actually generate business from your newsletter. So first of all, I'd say only commit to what you can fulfill. So when you create your newsletter, LinkedIn will ask you how often 
you expect to post. Now, if you put, you're going to post once a week, it will show you, I don't know if you can flip back, Giles, very quickly, on, the, on our company page. Can you see it says publish monthly above the 425 subscribers? If you set that you're going to publish weekly and then you only publish monthly, it's going to turn people off. So just be realistic with what you can commit to. Often once a month might be a nice way to start. Go back to the other side, please, Giles. And the next thing is make your first one really good. The reason being, your first one is going to be sent to all of your company followers and they're then going to decide from that one whether they want to subscribe to read more of them. Obviously, everyone that's really good stands a chance of earning subscribers, so make them all good. But the first one in particular, <laughs> make it really good. And that's really about offering value. It's not about being salesy. It's about offering insight and whether it's market insight, whether it's trends, whether it's um, competitor market evaluation, whether it's what's you know happening in the marketplace and new products that are being launched make it valuable um, and we'll come on to some really nice examples on the next slide but if you encourage action engagement shares then again your newsletter articles will gain more visibility so they'll show up in people's feeds outside of your network and that's where you'll gain more subscribers and gain more awareness and it's all down to impressions the awareness so what we're trying to do is get as many impressions on your post as possible now, the other thing, if you're into search engine optimization, which is what SEO stands for, the way that, and this is, I've read this, so I can't 100% tell you this is true. Um, having said that, we've, it seems to, to work with a couple of LinkedIn posts that we've done, but because LinkedIn structures their newsletters slightly differently to your blog articles on your website, you can actually replicate content. So Google won't, um, what's the word, um, punish you for replicating content on LinkedIn that you've already got on a blog, which a lot of the time you have to change the way it's, you know, change at least 40% of it um, for it not to be deemed as duplicate content. So what you can also do with LinkedIn newsletters is you can add backlinks into your website, which helps you for SEO. So it will then help your website content rank a bit higher on Google. So that's a nice little added touch so don't forget to add your backlinks and the final thing is know your objective um with newsletters sit down and work out what are you going to write about what do you want to get out of them is it to gain more followers is it to um, gain webinar attendees you know look at what are you trying to achieve with your newsletters and then you can start to incorporate that into your content and measure against it so newsletters can definitely fill your sales funnel. I have people that, um, I know people that create regular newsletters that bring inquiries in and people saying, oh, I didn't know you did that piece of work and that's a really great, great client. So it's a nice gentle way of gaining visibility and filling your sales funnel. You're gaining, this is an old marketing kind of term I've always worked to is marketing is about credibility and visibility. So if you can gain your credibility with those long form leadership pieces increase your visibility by increasing your impressions and that's where you start to drive momentum so let's explore a few examples um, on the next few pages of i think newsletters that are done really well so on the left we've got future tech trends and just looking at the he publishes weekly you can see he's got 816,000 subscribers which is pretty impressive uh, I know. He's done 428 editions and you can see it's all about trends and technology. So real thought leadership. Um, I've just kind of opened up that I've got two in images there of the type of content all about AI. I mean, AI is obviously a big topic at the moment, but when you drill down into the article, he's giving himself that credibility. So he's saying, OK, I write at LinkedIn and Forbes. I write about you know management and technology trends, um, but he's also then giving his objective at the forefront so what he's looking for is to gain followers so he's saying follow me connect to me so he's looking at building his awareness um, and presence among people so building that following which he's doing quite well at um, the one on the right is a uh, more in the recruitment sector so punk rock hr podcast which has 37,000 subscribers which again is really good for that kind of hr recruitment sector and they've written 148 editions and their editions are all podcasts. But what they've done really nicely is they've, they've outlined what you'll hear. So they're kind of putting in the, the selling points of the podcasts. They're linking to external resources. So don't forget, you can look at those backlinks there to your website to drive traffic to your website. 
Um, but their main call to action is at the bottom, the follow and review. So we would love you to follow us on the Apple Podcast app. So they're trying to drive Apple Podcast listeners, which again, you know, expands that, that reach. So both really nice examples. There's one more that I'm going to show you on the next one, please, Giles, which is um, a presentation skill coach. And um, this just drills out, down into one newsletter example, um, which is all about the objective here is to gain webinar attendees, but she gives away a lot of content, a lot of free content. So she talks about um, the six principles that Italo Calvino, who I don't know if anyone's ever heard of him, um, uh, believes are fundamental to literature and writing. So she covers some really nice content. She's teaching you about the lightness, the speed of accuracy of writing. She's then looking at how that translates into public speaking. And then at the bottom, she's giving away free public speaking session um, and how she shows you how to register when it is. So that's a really nice newsletter example that's gaining, I think each of those webinars just from LinkedIn alone is gaining over a hundred attendees um, every month. So just sending it out to her first degree connections. Um, so those are the nice examples. Um, what have we got on the next slide, Giles? Because I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's that's newsletters. That's why uh, that's why create newsletters. That's you know they do ultimately result in awareness and growing your business. And again, it's really easy for you to get started with them. Um, and what you can do in the longer term is start to feed your lead funnel with duck soup. So you can start to invite more people to subscribe to your newsletters. So. Obviously, you've got that organic piece of if your content's good, then people will share, they will like, it will appear in feeds, it would appear in searches. But you can also feed your subscribers, your newsletter subscribers, with a duck soup campaign. Um, and I think Giles is just going to show you, talk through a bit about how to do that. That's all right, Giles? Yeah. Yeah, and I think just to add there to what Beth's been saying, you know, I speak to quite a few people who, who create a lot of content in LinkedIn, um, some via posts, some via, via um by newsletters. And I think just to reiterate exactly what Beth said there, it's all about making sure you're giving value to people and you're not just coming across as um, spamming people with, with, with useless information or just repeating yourself. There has to be value in what you're doing in order for people to engage with it. Um, and as, the, as long as you don't pro over promise and sort of say, yeah, I'm gonna do three a week or whatever it might be, you know, if you raise expectations that much, then people are just going to be disappointed or switch off from it. So make sure you manage those expectations and have a clear idea as to what you're targeting. Because, you know, there the, are the, the various people I've spoken to, they thought they were going to go down one track with this sort of thing. And it turned out to be completely different once they started doing the analysis. And it actually proved to be equally valuable, just unexpected results from, from what they'd done. So what I want to show you now very quickly is what we can do with those with those uh, newsletter subscribers and, um, and how we can grow that, that that list of newsletter subscribers as well. Because say once you've got your page followers, your, your, your company page followers, you've launched your first newsletter, great. So all of those 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 page followers have had that that um, have had that notification, and, and hopefully you've had a, a massive influx of new subscribers and new page uh, newsletter subscribers. But there's going to be a huge population out there on the on on LinkedIn. Maybe your first degree connections, maybe second and third degree connections, who you want to reach out to to get them to subscribe as well. So there's a few things that we can now do uh, with Duck Soup, and uh, we'll start with one of the one of the newest things. So if we go to our our company page here and we look at our newsletters here, if we scroll down the bottom and we look at our subscriber demographics for our newsletter, we can actually go down to the bottom here. And one of the new things that we can do now is we can now run Duck Soup against this page. Now it may take a minute or two, um, but the Duck Soup icon is going to turn green in a minute. It did earlier when we weren't running Go To alongside it, but there we go, it's turned green. So that's always a relief when it works. So this is a, a recently added list that we can now run Duck Soup against, which is fabulous because we can now say, great, we've got all of these subscribers. And okay, these are second and third degree connections for this particular LinkedIn account, but we could now run a campaign against this, this page, which I think is brilliant. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic addition to sort of the portfolio of lists that we can run Duck Soup against. It also allows us with Duck Soup, you know, we could just go, for example, create a campaign to auto visit all of these, prof these profiles, and gather data about these people. Who are the people who are really visiting us? What do we want to do with that data? 
the duck soup turbo or, or, or cloud of course we could have that pumped into a crm or into a spreadsheet wherever it may be um, but there's el almost endless possibilities now remember if you're using pro as well we could still do that as well but you know we could just go out click up here we could do our visit profiles download the data etc cetera, etc cetera. so there are options there as well but you know one of the one of the things that you know when i was thinking about this earlier today when we were doing some prep for this i was thinking yeah well one thing you might want to do is tag all of these people so that you know you've tagged them you've labeled them with a duck soup tag um and if i'm talking about topics here which you're maybe not familiar with if you go to our support pages and look up tagging you'll understand what duck soup tags are um because we can then use tags to track what we've done with with it with uh, profiles in the future so for example 430 subscribers here maybe it's worth tagging them all with a newsletter tag for example so we know okay these have all subscribed to our our newsletter we know not to reach out to them forcing them to what requesting them to invite uh, inviting them to, uh, to 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 join our newsletter subscription as well a little bit off topic off topic there but very very closely related so of course now we've got our, our newsletter it's up and running we're producing what maybe two a month or a monthly edition whatever it may be so that's where we if we're using DuckSoup Turbo or DuckSoup Cloud we could then create a campaign to get people to subscribe so for example here in our ducks dash i've created one here already first degree to newsletter subscribers so i created a campaign earlier um and i could extend this of course i'm only putting first degree connections into here so again i go and do my search for first degree connections um pull that up in linkedin or sales navigator wherever it may be um and then i've just created a couple of follow-up messages i've taken out that connection request because i can't send them that connection request message hey there we've got a regular newsletter variable blah 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 and there's the url for them to just click on and subscribe and then maybe 10 days later hey a reminder remember if, if they reply to me and say done they're not going to get that second message anyway and maybe i monitor who has subscribed and then i can just um, take them out of the campaign because with all of the campaign activities we can always monitor the progress through the funnel we can see how many messages have gone out how many people have responded and determine what happens next remember so that's one very neat way that we could you know go and find our first degree connections remind them hey this is brand new we've got our newsletter um, and uh, reach out to them and try and bolster that number similarly we could also create a um a second degree outreach or second or third degree or non-connected people outreach um and maybe i'm then running this against the 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 page followers of duck soup um and i'm maybe these are the people who've, who've subscribed to, to the duck soup page since we launched the newsletter um and i hear this way i'm, I'm then going to send them a connection request trying to connect with them and then letting them know in my follow-up messages hey we've got a, a newsletter would you like to subscribe so there's lots of different ways of doing this it depends upon you know how big your first degree network is what's the overlap between your first degree network and your page followers vice versa as well so there's all sorts of different ways of, of, of sort of trying to bring all of this data together using duck soup tags as well so so making you're using the tag tool and and then and, and you've got the traceability who's a follower who's subscribed to my, 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 my newsletter who's a first degree connection etc etc we can bring all of that together and be really efficient in those uh in those methods of reaching out to people so lots of different pages we can run duck soup against so we could i mean we talked here about the newsletter subscribers we can do exactly the same against our page followers um so if we go to our, our, our list of followers here again we can run duck soup against this list of page followers again you have to be the page admin you go to the see all followers wait for the duck soup icon to turn green and remember and we're diving down a bit more of a rabbit hole here as well you don't have to just run duck soup from here and say right i'm i'm just gonna i've got to subscribe every enroll everybody remember there are the options with duck soup to scan a list edit that list create a csv file a spreadsheet in other words of the people you do want to re reach out to and then uploading that that file in the future so we've got all sorts of different ways of doing this but the ultimate ambition is to make this as efficient as possible and to help you bolster those page followers and those newsletter subscribers um think about this as a part of your overall offering that, you, that you're doing whatever it is you're whatever you're working on on linkedin whatever your lead generation goals are this should all be part of that 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 tapestry that you're putting together and and your strategy depending of course on what your goal is and we'll go back to the slides 
if you've really got lots of followers and you can jump straight to the newsletter i think really having something that pushes a linkedin notification and an email notification is really powerful it's going to get eyes on your content um yeah. and um I've seen that someone's content commented in the chat about more needing help with a strategy of what do they write in their content. And that's a really hard one because it really depends on who you are, what industry you're in. Um, and I think one of the best ways you can start to think about and research the market is looking at other newsletters of your competitors and saying, well, which ones have got the, the most followers? What is their content like? What are they covering? What are their call to actions? Um, how many people in their organization are driving towards the newsletter subscribers? Because actually we've talked here about scaling um, the lead funnel. So it's all very well one LinkedIn profile doing it with one company page. But think about if you've got 10, 20, 30, 100 salespeople in your organization all sending duck soup campaigns saying, please subscribe to our newsletter. If you can grow seven company followers with one profile imagine what you could do with 100 profiles so you, know, you can scale your subscribers um but the content i think needs a bit of research about finding your tone of voice deciding what's i guess what are you passionate about what do you want to be promoting as a business what do you believe strongly in and what kind of content leads to that and if people are generally reading blogs, then it could be a blog strategy. If people like listening to podcasts, it could be a podcast strategy. It could be webinars. It could be videos that you're promoting. So I think, you know, have, have a look and see what your competitors are doing out there and see what resonates with you. Next slide. I think, um, yeah, we're on to questions, I believe. Questions. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> Oh, you're back. Hi. Okay. Here I am. Um, we don't have heaps of questions at the moment. You've gone through the content one. Um, we've had a couple of people. Catherine asked us a few questions and also said she's not doing a newsletter yet, but is thinking about it. Um, Savio has said they are using newsletters at the moment. Thanks for that, Savio. Um, All I'd say, Catherine, is remember some of those tips. So make it proper. You know thought leadership content it's not about oh we've just done this project and we've looked at our lovely case study it's about insights into okay if it is a case study then what were the latest things that are happening on the market how did you really help them improve what tips and tricks can you give other companies that are looking to do the similar thing so it needs to be long form thought leadership giving away something that not everyone's done so just go through that slide where we've talked about you know adding value um and and see what you can take from that um, there's a question here from um from gerhardt i'm a small business and i only have about 300 followers is it worth me doing a newsletter or do i not have enough people to to do it for um if gerhardt can share with us how many connections he has if he has a big pool of connections i definitely recommend doing that um, asking your first degree connections to follow your page so that when your newsletter is launched um it will go out and tell all your followers that you've launched a newsletter. Okay. So, I mean, everyone's got to start somewhere. You saw ours. Ours is still quite small. Um, quite, we're quite new to it, and it will build. Um, it is slowly building. But if you're not producing much other content and you're not using LinkedIn much, then you might find you need to gain your company followers first. Um, how long should my newsletter be? That's from Jane. Uh, in terms of length of content, I mean, the average blog is a thousand characters. So if you look at a newsletter, I base it around a similar format. But put images in, make it a journey, like I said. So um, again, you can go and have a look at a couple of ours. We've only done two so far, but that kind of length is recommended. Break it up, put content followed by imagery if you can, put around a thousand characters, I'd say. Yeah, what you don't want to do is have it have so much there that people are, are just not going to read it. People, unfortunately, we all have a, a relatively short attention span, and we talk about this when we're sending, you know, connection requests and follow-up messages. People make up their mind in the first two or three lines if they're going to bother to read the rest of it. Um, so think about that. You think about how you're going to contextualise your 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 content, get their attention in those first two or three lines. Have you had enough uh, sort of 
taglines, enough uh, keywords in those in those opening lines to get people's attention, to get them to scroll down and actually and read it and engage with it. Now, Joe, remind me, am I going mad here? Is it characters I'm talking about or words? <laughs> because I'm used to Duck Soup's all about characters, but I think it's a thousand words in a blog that we're talking about words. Sorry. So I said characters, I meant words. I'm on Duck Soup. Uh, character limit. <laughs> You're looking at character <laughs> limits rather than word limit. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> about a thousand words. <laughs> Um, Doris has asked about the uh, presentation. Yes, you can get a copy of the presentation at info at ducks-soup.com, which is on the screen there. If you just email them, then they'll get that copy to you. You'll also get the recording later today, don't forget as well. So if you want to watch it back and fast forward and rewind to your heart's content, then you can do. Um, George, uh, I just say, while you're reading that, anyone worried about numbers of kind of subscribers? Again, what Duck Soup's all about is accelerating that and kind of growing that. So if you haven't got numbers, run a Duck Soup campaign. You don't have to do it to first degree connections. A lot of people are trying to target non-connections. So they're saying, OK, I want to target HR directors of software companies, for example. So you can create that list and you can actually set a campaign out to grow your newsletter subscriber list. And if you're not already using DuckSuit, that free trial is exactly that. It's a free trial to test it, so you don't have to put credit card details in. Just go, you can download it from the main page of the website. Joe's probably put a link in as well. I think she has already. But just give it a go. Um, run a campaign, try and grow your newsletter subscribers that way. Um, but you just might need to tweak your messaging a little bit and give them a little bit of reason to subscribe rather than just saying, hey, um, from Duck Soup, can you subscribe to my newsletter? Uh, you might need to talk about why they should subscribe. Thank you. Um, so here are some more sort of generic -y Duck Soup ones. Um, are the same Duck Soup features available on cloud for the agency version? Okay, so um, the agency, of course, you can have agency pro, agency turbo, or agency cloud. Um, so there are lots of different variants available. Um, all options are there. I'm assuming you're talking about cloud agency. So yes, you would be able to do this with cloud agency and run it from multiple accounts um, from a single dashboard. Um, what I'll do is I, while I'm talking or while somebody's answering the next question, I'll find the link to the support article, which explains everything around the agency models. And I'll stick that into the, uh, into the chat box as well. Yes, thank you. Um, Adam, Adam Please. Easy question. <laughs> While Giles is doing that. <laughs> is there a way to make campaigns have a priority? I'd like some companies to jump in the queue if they're more important customers to reach. That's no, I, know, I know you can turn campaigns off. So um, and I've done exactly this recently with one is um, a webinar campaign where the webinar was happening today and we ran a campaign um, for Duck Soup just to invite some connections to a webinar. So we turned all the other campaigns off in your drip campaigns. There's a little setting where you can literally turn that campaign off. Remember to save it at the bottom. And the only one that will then run is the one that's on. So yeah, that's one way of doing it. Yeah, it's, it's the, actually the only way of doing it. Um, so you can see here, I've got these campaigns at the moment. Hopefully you can still see my screen. Um, and yeah, if you want to turn a campaign, you turn it off with the switch here and then make sure you press the save button, um, otherwise it doesn't save. Um, and then basically turning a campaign pauses that campaign. Nothing will get processed from that campaign until you then go and re-enable it. And that's the only way to currently prioritize one campaign over other ones. Now, if you have multiple campaigns running and you've got multiple actions in the queue, so at the moment you can see here, I've got three campaigns on on this list here it will actually just cycle through all three. So it won't do everything from defaults before then moving on to the next one or from the next one. It will cycle through the campaigns um, on, an, uh, on a, on a cycle, cyclical basis um, and uh, yeah, um, share the activities around um, evenly um, if actions are due to be executed. But yeah, the only way to, to, uh, to prioritize is to turn off those that are less of a priority. And when you turn it back on again, does it just pick up where it left off? Exactly that, yes. Perfect. There you go, Adam, then. Asked and answered. Um, just bear with me. So George has asked a few questions. Uh, I think it's one question, but it's coming in multiple, uh, in multiple stages. So my question is, 
Sometimes I send valuable information to customers. Naturally, only some of them answer, but a lot of them will stay silent and not answer at all. What would you recommend to do in that case with the silent customers? So your valuable <laughs> ones stays quiet. <laughs> um and obviously it has a you say respond are you putting a call to action in that valuable content because what you could be doing is if you have say it's a linkedin newsletter and you want them to take an action which might be to uh, register or watch a video or point them somewhere else you could track who's actually clicking on that call to action um, and maybe measure where they're going so it might not be that they're all about eliciting a response it's remember what your objective is so this does really depend on your objective. If you're just sending valuable content with no call to action and no objective, then you're relying on someone responding. And that's great if they are responding, that's, you're generally going to get good quality leads. So the ones that aren't responding, is it because there's no call to action in there or nothing for them to do next, or you're not asking any questions? Well, but one thing to maybe refer to, and I think, I think Joe, you shared the, the, the link to this article earlier. Um, Think about nurturing those people. Um, we had a, a guest speaker last year, um, Michael, uh, who did a webinar for us, and there's a blog post talking about the nurture sequence that he uses, which he sends out messages to his network. He's sending two or three informative um, uh, posts or, or articles to people on, on an annual basis. And a number of those, those people, it takes 18 months, two years, maybe two and a half years for people to then become customers or to be to engage with him. Don't bombard people with endless messages. You know, you'll just be seen as spamming, but send a respectful, you know, leave several months between your messages, and then you, you're still giving yourself a chance of an engagement there. As, as, as Beth says there, the call to action is also really important. Are you, is there a call to action? Is there any, a question in there that you're asking people to, to respond to? So uh, yeah, think about that as well, but don't, don't just give up on them. Because they may be, you know, the, the, the time from when you connected with them or when you first sent a message, their circumstances may well have changed a year, 18 months down the line. And then you, you, they see a, something from you. Oh, yeah, that's the guy I was going to speak to about whatever it may be. So be patient um, and don't just give up on them. And the thing in marketing, it's a holy grail to track everything through to the first point you touch someone. So when they eventually come and say, hey, I'm interested in chatting to you. But in, the reality isn't like that. Websites. Uh, the way to track most of your interactions but if you're not pointing them towards a website um, there are other ways so with kind of webinar platforms if you're invited into a webinar you can sometimes track who clicked on a specific link with a specific source code um, but if someone reads that article goes away picks up the phone a few days later and calls you you lose that visibility so you can't track everything just because they're silent and they don't reply it doesn't mean that they haven't ingested it aren't really interested in it so like Joe says don't give up unless they tell you to go away and then you can take them out of your list but that's a response so then at least you know and <laughs> <laughs> um, Manuel has asked is it better to post the content in my personal profile or on the company page well that's a good question i mean the company page is all about generating um traffic for the company but i would say do both so i actually did write i've got another piece of content coming out for this where i analyzed a post on um, a personal profile and the company profile and what i found was the personal profile got way more um impressions and that was largely because of the size of the network, because the company followers wasn't as big, in fact, it was really small. So it depends how many followers you've got on your company profile. If you've got more followers, more newsletter subscribers, then obviously you'll gain more engagement. However, when I measure the actual um, in, not in, yeah, engagement rate, so the people um, that liked it, that commented on it, on my personal profile, it got something like a 0.7% um, engagement rate and on the company profile it got a 21% engagement rate so it does kind of depend on your circumstances so 
Um, I would, you can do both certainly. So post on your profile, share it to your company, but that's for kind of posting newsletters. Again, um, newsletters should be slightly different content, your longer form thought leadership. You can post those against both company and profile, uh, personal profile as well. And monitor the results. It's all about testing and analyzing and monitoring, measuring. And being consistent as well. I think that's the other, the other thing. If, if you're consistent and you have a, a methodical approach, it, it shouldn't be scattergun. It, it should be process driven, um, because then you have valuable information that you can then move forward and make make well informed decisions as to what to do next. And that goes the same when you're using DocSoup as well. If you're using campaigns, whatever it may be, if you're using DocSoup campaigns, if you're build, build, building newsletters and building followers on LinkedIn, be consistent, analyze, and understand what's working, um, and that will stand you in good stead going forward. Um, Adam has asked, now Adam I asked you if you could just get back in touch but he's, um, he has said is there any way to add custom fields as inserts? I'm assuming that means in a duck soup campaign not currently other than if you're using custom CSV files. Um, what I could point you towards there is our feature request page, um, which I'll dig out the link to um, because I think it's on there and it's something that could be upvoted. Um, please do have a look at that that uh, that page, Adam, um, and feel free to upvote it if you can find it. And if you can't find it, that that request, then um, please add it. Uh, but yeah, um, it's something that uh, is is one of the things that's under discussion. I'm just popping that in there. I've done it already. I've done it already. I've just sent it directly to Adam as well. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, Adam said yes in the campaign. Uh, da, 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 da. George said thank you. Really good content and advice, which is lovely. Yes. Thanks, George. And Savio, uh, we appear to have the last question from Savio. Um, Right now, we haven't got any leads from our newsletters as such, but would want to know more on how to cluster my subscribers using DuckSoup and how much duration I need to wait to see the results and take decisions accordingly about optimizing it further. So when he's going through the results of things, how long should he wait before he starts to analyze those results and tweak his approach, I think is the question for the subscribers. Yeah, that's that, that's a tricky down. answer. Yeah. Well, I don't know um, if you can say what you're trying to get out of it. Is the what is the result you would like? Is it people ringing you up and saying I'd like to buy, or I mean, maybe you need to break your sales step funnel down into a kind of more simpler step. So you're trying to drive engagement on a different level. Your objective could be different, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and you measure how that objective performs um so yeah I mean newsletters if you're aiming for massive customers to drop into your sales funnel, sales funnel within a week then I think you might be disappointed um but if you're aiming to engage new contacts get them to subscribe to your newsletter start feeding your funnel start gaining awareness and that's I think a more realistic expectation of newsletters and then your sales team can maybe follow up and try and chase them down a bit yeah okay yeah, and, and uh, along along the same lines as well. You know, when when you're reaching out for for new subscribers or new connections on LinkedIn, you know, remember if 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 an invite's been out to somebody for a month, perhaps it's very unlikely that people are going to go back through those old invites and accept them. Um, usually, people uh, it's a spur of the moment thing. They see an invite come in, and sometime within those first few days, depending on when they're logged on to LinkedIn. Remember, not everybody's on LinkedIn every day. Um, uh, yeah, there are some people like that apparently. Um, uh, the um, you know people will usually usually react to an, an invite, whether that's a newsletter subscription or an invite to connect, reasonably quickly. So you know these the, you should see things happening reasonably quickly um, if if that's what you're trying to uh, achieve. And remember with DuckSoup to help keep your account safe, just getting it back to the DuckSoup, um, you can use DuckSoup to auto withdraw invites as well if they're connection requests and that's something that you should always make sure you're you're keeping on top of as well and another little tip i think if you are producing your first few newsletters ask friends and colleagues to engage with them because if people see that they're getting good engagement and they kind of assume that the content's really good as well so 
It might be kind of cheating in the first instance, but use every resource you can just to build that engagement and then they'll get shown a bit further and um, you're more likely to get people subscribing and reading them. Great advice, thank you both. Let's have a look at uh, the next few slides. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of lowdown on the next couple of webinars that we've got. So our next session on 1st of October, we'll be looking at our latest integration with Fresh Sales CRM. Uh, we'll be taking all of your CRM related questions as well, regardless of which CM, CRM you're using or which you're interested in. And we'll also be announcing our next very much anticipated integration too. So that's not one to miss. Uh, let me share the... There you go, if you want to do that one, that's on the 1st of October, same time, same place. Um, and I've just put the link in the chat for you there so you can sign up right now. And then in four weeks time, if we jump onto the next slide, please, Giles, um, we've got a really uh, awesome session on October the 15th, which will be focusing on how the top performing sales teams are driving bigger and better results from LinkedIn and smashing their targets using DuckSoup. So we'll be talking about things like collaborative targeting, uh, analyzing conversion rates, professional campaigns and branding strategies. So um, that's a really good one if you are um, part of a sales team or you manage a sales team or you want to be in a sales team, uh, then come and join that session. I will pop the link in for there as well. That's also in the chat. Uh, <laughs> what else can I tell you? I can talk about support. <laughs> um, we go through this on a, on a regular basis, so the regulars will know. But um, if you need any support, whether it's a, a quick one to one, um, you can get a free 15 minutes or you can get a longer session, um, a booster session or a tech session, which will be uh, with Giles or Scott. Scott's not here today, but he, he he's very much still around. Um, so those sessions are to help you from a technical perspective if you're looking at integrating um, a CRM, for example, and you don't know how to do it, or you just want some help with your campaigns and, and the features through DuckSoup, um, and for whatever reason you've got stuck. Um, so if you use that link there, then you can uh, sort yourselves out with uh, some one-to-one -one time. With um, sorry, just, just on support, I think someone asked if there are agencies that run DuckSoup. Um, there are some that we know of that um, if you email Eve, so eve at ducks-soup.com, um, then Eve will be able to send you some of the agencies that we kind of know and we know they're pretty capable at running Duck Soup. So hopefully that's answered that question as well. Yeah, I think there's also a link on the website uh, where you can get that information. Yeah. I sent the information over, so <clears throat> it's in there to find. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, don't forget to put your reviews on G2 because we love to get them and you obviously get a free cap. Um, and what was the other thing I wanted to remind you all about? The free trial. Do the free trial. Um, we know that there's lots of non-users who join this uh, these sessions, so please take, uh, take time to uh, click on the link and get the free trial. Um, because it's free, so why not? <laughs> right, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. So thank you to Giles and to Beth. It's nice to see you on here, Beth. Thank you. Absolutely. Nice to see you. Yeah. Hey, Giles. <laughs> Everyone's getting bored of me, I think. You know, we need new faces on these. And thank you to all our users for attending too. And we will see you hopefully Absolutely. in two weeks' time. Bye bye. Bye bye.